Next segment, we're finally talking about the Nintendo Switch. More specifically, will the Nintendo Switch help or hurt the 3DS? Uh, this is based on a um, story that ran, or like an interview that pe- Nintendo high ops did, uh, which kind of contradicted stuff they originally said about the 3DS and the Switch. I have the story up. First off, I want to get your guys' thoughts. We kind of touched on this back when we talked about the Switch around its announcement. But Callie, do you think the Switch will help or hurt, or what, what effect will it have on 3DS? So um, the best example I can come up with that would support like helping the 3DS is Pokemon Go supposedly bolstered sales of Sun and Moon. So it didn't compete directly with Sun and Moon because they were separate experiences on separate platforms that were made tailor made for each of those platforms. And so I think um, like uh, I, did, I reviewed Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, which is a port of the Wii U version, and I think that it works better on. Uh, 3DS, for example, and so I think certain things work better better on a completely mobile platform um, like the 3DS versus the Switch, which is uh, something that Peter brought up, which is it's a console that can be mobile. It's not intended to be like a traveling handheld, um, and so I think for the user base that's already like really in love with their 3DS like I carry my 3DS with me everywhere. The selling point for the Switch is like, oh, you can kind of play it up close if you feel like it, but that's not really how it's intended to play, to be played and all the games that are made for it are console games first and foremost. And so I don't think they'll necessarily compete with each other. I think the challenges in marketing and Nintendo has had that problem before with marketing where with the Wii U, they struggled a lot to properly differentiate that from the Wii for kind of the, I don't, I really hate using like casual, but the more like lay person or like, you know, your grandma who knows what a Wii I is. I think and, Nintendo called like the family audience, right? With yeah. Wii. So they really struggle to differentiate the Wii U. And so I think that that's the biggest challenge is how do they market it? So you know that this isn't actually a handheld. It's something that can be played on the go but it's not a replacement for a 3DS. They're definitely tackling, I think, the problem of audience and perception really well because all of their marketing for Switch has shown adults. Mm-hmm. Yes, You've not absolutely. seen any kids, right? Or, or elderly the, people. You might be right. But the point is, 3DS <laughs> is geared towards kids, right? I mean, mm-hmm. I think that is a pretty big differentiator. And the, the Switch looks like a very sort of like high-end device, especially in person, like... Super impressed with the build quality on that thing. A 3DS is something you can just toss around. Like it's made to sort of be durable. It's not really like a refined piece of equipment. So the marketing, I think they might be doing a better job this time because they are getting around Absolutely. some of that confusion. Um, but yeah, like I think you pretty much covered most of the points you know, that really need to be said. I mean, they're different products with different aims. Yeah. So you got hands on with the Switch in New York uh, about a month ago, right? I touched the, it. At the reveal. I touched it the, all uh, North American <laughs> reveal, at least. And you were saying this is not anywhere near the, like you were just saying, the portability of the 3DS. This isn't something you're going to see on the bus a lot, right? It's. I mean, you might see it, yeah. but it's certainly not like, I don't know about you guys, when I play stuff like on a plane or whatever, I kind of just like keep it to myself. I don't like have the world understand that I'm playing a freaking video game and I'm, you know, having yeah. a good time. The Switch is not huge, right? I mean, it is... So, the screen is the same size as the gamepad of the Wii U, and the bezel around it is not that much bigger, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it's not huge, but it's also not small and compact. And I think, you know, again, because the experiences that are going to be made for it are more console-like games, to play a thing for 15, 20 minutes on your commute, <clears throat> even 45 minutes, you're not going to get as much out of it as if you're really settling in to play something else. Whereas so many 3DS games are like, here's a 15-minute mission that you can mm-hmm. get done and accomplished. Absolutely. Close it up. Move it, you know, move along. Yeah, like the dungeons and like Link Between Worlds. Right. There's a lot of dungeons in that game, but they're they're shorter. almost bite sized. Same with like, yeah. I mean, as opposed to Twilight Princess, the dungeons could take you like 45 yeah. minutes. Um, yeah. Whereas like what like I didn't like Animal Crossing City Folk very much because that was on Wii and it just didn't make sense to drop into my town for 15 minutes. It makes so much more sense on on handheld. So it's, it's just like totally different platforms. It, uh, yeah. 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 And it seems like this in this case, my ideal situation with the Switch would be what it seemed like they're going for. I'm playing Breath of the Wild and then I don't know, like they just showed a laundromat or something. I have to get up and go semi close by or something or to like a cafe across the street to get coffee or to go to the bookstore because I'm pretty intellectual. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I didn't think that you knew how to read, but I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> if I screw up your chat comments, it's because I'm illiterate. You can't read. Um, but then the comments here, um, someone there did an interview with uh, Shinya Takahashi, the GM of Nintendo's Entertainment Planning and Development Division, and Yoshiaki Koizumi, ED, the Nintendo Entertainment Planning and Development Deputy GM. 
They discussed the possibility of an upgraded model of Switch, potential accessories, and more. And then we could also talk about that, like how they might update Joy Cons outside of just aesthetics. Um, like you, there was those, there was that concept art like a month ago or something that showed what else yeah. could be attached. I mean, think yeah. about any little like in-game graphic or like little meter or you know device. If it's a reasonable size, you can interact with that and put it on a controller. Like I think you were talking about the yokai spinning wheel thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. so simple. You just you just sell that, you bundle it with the game. Players put that on and they're good to go. And that creates a really interesting proposition because that means, man, the Switch can transform to be so many things to so many different people. Mm -hmm. In terms of power upgrades, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this is not like a weird, crazy console. It's like a tablet. And tablets get upgraded all the time. NVIDIA is definitely working on tech that will surpass what is in Switch. The Switch stuff is outdated. So uh, I would not be surprised if in 18 months or two years we saw some sort of announcement like, you know. This Switch might be plus. completely right. off base, this comparison, but it sounded more like the way they were describing how uh, these two executives were saying how they want to update the Switch sounded more like an Android. Like you can take take it apart almost and put new Joy-Cons on it or new accessories. It's well, yeah, modular. Yeah. yeah. Not, yeah. And but then also, as opposed also, to like the PS4 Pro, the Xbox Scorpio, which is more of like an updated iPhone. Well, in the, in the past though, they've talked about creating tools for developers that allow them to port between devices okay. really easily. So to, to me, that would say porting to things that are maybe more powerful or, you know, coming down the road. Okay. Um, but yes, I think you're correct in your assumption as well, that you can really tailor this thing with a lot of interesting attachments. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and then this interview was with Time, and then uh, on GameSpot we were talking about how, also of note were Koizumi's comments on where Switch stands in relation to 3DS, which is the segment we are talking about. Uh, he didn't bring up the 3DS, but he did lay out a scenario which seemingly leaves a little room for it. Um, as, unless you're going the route that we're talking about. We're hoping the Nintendo Switch will be a system that will be the constant in your gaming life, Koizumi said, whereas previously you would play certain things in your home system and certain things on your handheld. Our hope is that Nintendo Switch can be the system that bridges both of those and becomes the constant system that you're always using. That's interesting. Especially which, because they said that there's not going to be any Street Pass, which is something that people love about 3DS. Yeah. Sure. That's, so that's the reason I carried mine around with me. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, same. I always have it on in my yeah. backpack. So Switch sounds like it's going to be, if based on that quote, it sounds like, you know, Oh, wait, no, sorry, there's more. But my hope is that with Nintendo Switch being a system that you can play at home and bring with you, you're going to be able to find more of those moments when we're able to play the games that we all enjoy and be able to play them that much more. I mean, they're Black not going to they're not going to back away from the promise, you know, in an interview about this thing being portable, right? Yeah. I mean, they're going to try to right. sell it from every angle they can. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'd be surprised if the 3DS was phased out. Cuz I hope not. I 3DS is one of my favorite things I own. Same. I can, I can see the DS line being upgraded. Yeah. You know. I mean, soonish? Yeah, I think it I think it probably needs to. Yeah. I mean, especially compared to Vita, it's outdated, but once you have the Switch next to it, you know, the resolution on these screens, the sort of graphics you're looking at, it's going to be, I think, underwhelming for a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we, we give Nintendo shit all the time for their library not being the best in recent years. You look at the 3DS, it's unreal. Yeah, that's yeah. like one yeah. of my favorite libraries there is. And it includes yeah. the DS library because those yeah. games are compatible. Yeah. I mean, and you have so. like classics on the for, like virtual, yeah. or sorry, uh, eShop and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, it's just weird that those quotes kind of sounded contradictory to what they originally laid out. Yeah, I mean, bridging, like, bridging the gap is probably the interesting part of that quote for me because, um, like there were, you know, all those rumors about Pokemon Stars being like, oh, the third version of Sun and Moon coming to Switch. And like there were graphical things in Sun and Moon that I thought like, oh, this looks extra weird on 3DS. Like it, sh it belongs on something a little bit like a step up. And so I don't know if that means a replacement or like extra features that if you play something on your 3DS and then you have, you know, this add on on your switch or whatever, like, I don't know what bridging the gap means. That's the, that's like the question, the big question mark for me on whether or not that that'll help or hurt the 3DS is what they mean by that. They'll probably lean in more into mobile in terms of bridging the gap between hardware. Yeah. Honestly. Cause that, I mean, that's what they're using for some matchmaking, some lobby stuff. Yeah, because we still don't know a ton about... We actually, like, Kotaku put up a pretty good article basically saying, like, yeah, we're a month away from Switch and we should really know a lot more. I mean, it, it really stands to question, will there be online day one? <coughs> I don't know. Have we seen the UI yet? Barely. Yeah? Barely. You didn't see any of that? Hand oh, right. No, there... they had debug UI at the event that I was at. Okay. But, you, right, you didn't see... You were 
sorry, you were playing games, but you didn't see like a home menu or anything. Right. Okay. Whenever they went to that, they were hiding it and they were doing something secret. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> oh, seriously. Seriously. They had individual safes next to each station. Well, there was a Nintendo of some other country had put out a commercial and they forgot to green screen and gameplay footage over the tablet. And we actually got a, a look at the debug menu. Yes. So I did see what it looked like eventually. Uh, but then since Nintendo has shown like a screenshot or two, what it actually looks like in trailers where they did cover up the green screen footage. You probably just said something uh, pretty insightful and helpful, but all not I was really. imagining was these thumbprint activated safes next to each station and you just sneaking around knocking out Nintendo employees and scanning their like eyeballs, <laughs> not knowing that they're thumbprint scanners. And then you actually didn't what's get to play What's going on in there? In what? In your head. I don't know. <laughs> just... I just like to imagine you thinking you're Solid Snake and knocking out people and trying Boss. to scan their eyeballs on yeah. a thumbprint thing. And then like you do this with the thumbprint, like, oh, that's all I need to do. Um, <laughs> what? It wouldn't be a good segment. Uh, if we didn't talk we didn't about knocking people out. Go off the rails the last second. We're about to pull into the station and nope. Um, <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's how you drive a train. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a wheel and everything. We ran out of coal. Uh, one of those dastardly villains had tied someone to the tracks and it threw it off. Snidely whiplash. Yes. Mm. Who? Snidely Whiplash. A, did you make it up? And B, if you didn't, what's that from? I wish I'd made it up. It's from Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh. You young boy. Is that the moose and the cow? <laughs> One of them's a moose, right? Rocky's the moose. Ro Rocky's a squirrel. Bullwinkle's a moose. Yes. Rocky's a squirrel. I wouldn't made that same mistake. Yeah. He's a flying squirrel, to be specific. What? Those things, like sugar gliders, is that the same thing as a flying squirrel? Mm -hmm. Those things are sweet. I don't know. I want one in my house. They're you like, want swoops. to own one? I really want a raccoon. I want a pet raccoon. Uh, I saw one on my run the other day, and he looked very confused at what cars were. <laughs> and I did not want to go near him, because I've heard they can be vicious. But I'm basing that entirely off the movie Elf. <laughs> when I say I've oh, heard they right. can be vicious, I'm just thinking of what he says. Does someone need a hug and then gets hugged yep. Yep, with claws? Yep. Okay, uh, let us know what you think. Are you worried at all about the Switch's impact on the 3DS? Are you hoping, like Callie said, that it would just supplement it? Are you, in general, looking for more info about the Switch like we are uh, a month before release? Almost exactly a month, a little few shorter than five days, and we will know more about the console in the coming weeks. Hopefully we'll get some in the office and we'll be able to tell you more. <laughs>